Welcome to chapter 56. I promise this is the last one that's a little bit depressing. After this, we get into some super cool, fun stuff. Okay, and I mean, we are going to end on a, on a higher note on this chapter as well because we're going to talk about conservation and so what's being done about all that crazy stuff we talked about in chapter 55. So, uh, sorry to start off with the biodiversity crisis, but we need to talk about it. Um, so extinction is going to be something that happens, right? That's how we mark periods and eras geologically. Um, so people are saying, well, what do we care? I mean, the dinosaurs all went extinct and the Earth still survived. However, it's the rate of extinction that's happening um, that we are really worried about because it's not like some meteor came and caused this crazy stuff to happen. It's us, it's humans that are doing this rate of extinction. So the reason that we care about a biodiversity crisis is for a couple of reasons. There's three. One is we're losing genetic diversity, right? So um, we're losing the fact that a population has all of that diversity. Now, since there's so few of them and they're inbreeding, they're losing that genetic diversity and something could come in and wipe them out really easily. Um, we're also losing species diversity. So the entire amount of species richness of the earth is going down at an alarming rate. And that's extremely dangerous, right? Because there are things that have niches that they were designed to live in. And um, evolution takes a long time to happen. Extinction is happening a lot faster than that. So um, one way that we're trying to um, figure out what's happening is getting a complete catalog of the species that are out there. We really don't know what's out there. They're still finding all new species. You saw in that Borneo presentation how many species they're finding. And so one thing that we're doing is we have the Endangered Species Act. So one thing I want to make sure that you're clear on is the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species. Which one do you think is, more, uh, is worse off? Hopefully you're thinking endangered species. So endangered species is one that is in danger of going extinct. A threatened species is on its way to becoming endangered. So hopefully you can tell the difference between the two. So if we were to look at it, some numbers, 12% of birds, 20% of mammals, and 32% of amphibians are threatened with an extinction. That's a lot. It's scary, scary numbers here. Okay, and then the last thing that we're losing is ecosystem diversity. So there are entire ecosystems that are going away and getting replaced by like desert and stuff. It's really, really insane. And the diversity left in those converted ecosystems are not anywhere close to what they used to be or what they could be if they truly were that type of ecosystem. Okay, so why is this important to humans? I find this to be a very, very important question because there are going to be people out there that are like, I don't care about saving the whales. I don't care about saving rainforests. Trust me, I know quite a few of them. So you've got to figure out a way to say, well, why is this important to humans? Because that might tug on something that they care about, right? So one important thing is that biodiversity is giving us a lot of natural resources like crops, fibers, and most importantly, medication, right? There are pharmaceutical companies now that are going out to the rainforest and preserving areas of the rainforest so that they can study the plant's medicinal value. That's how um, crazy this stuff is getting. Um, another reason this is important, we're losing all of these crazy genes that are out there. Now I know in your book there's pictures of like, we got a pig's nose to light up by putting a glow-in-the-dark jellyfish gene in there. That is cool, but um, could you imagine the way that we could use some of these genes for our advantage? Um, so like, I mean, this is just a crazy one, but like a sea star, right? A starfish, they, um, if you pull their arm off, they'll grow a new one. How cool would it be if we could isolate that gene and put it in us? So like if we get in a car accident and our leg gets chopped off, we're like, ah, you know what? Tomorrow I'll have a new leg. Obviously, there's ways that that could go really wrong, but just to give you an idea of the crazy things that are being done out there and just what's, what's just out there as far as genes go. Um, then we've also got the field of biotech. There are so many cool things that we are going to talk about this semester. For example, there is a bacteria that we've realized that if we feed them a certain diet, they make um, PVC, so they actually can make this, uh, not PVC, um, a plastic, and it's biodegradable. How cool is that? So there's so many neat things out there that we haven't even discovered yet. Um, another thing that they are going to provide for us is just plain old ecosystem services. And I find that if someone doesn't care about the environment, this is the hardest one to sell to them. But it's like, do you like breathing? Do you like having clean water? Yeah, me too. Um, nature's providing that for us, so you better step it up, right? 
Um, but there's also, you know, um, seed dispersal, pollination. Those are huge things that are coming into light now with all the bees dying off and everything. So a lot of different things that biodiversity serves us with every single day. Okay, so now let's talk about what's happening. Why are there these threats to biodiversity? So the major, major, major one is gonna be habitat destruction. So we literally are, you know, deforesting these huge areas of the rainforest for cow pastures and stuff. So obviously if organisms don't have a place to live, then that's going to really have a huge effect on them. And to give you an idea of the amount that is happening, 50% of wetlands in the United States have been drained and converted. 50% of those wetlands that we talked about that need to be so protected. 93% of coral reefs have been damaged by our activities. 93%. That is a huge number, right? And a lot of times it's just people don't know any better, but there's a lot of money behind most of these things, and that's just a scary thought. Um, one thing that we're doing habitat um, destruction-wise is something called fragmentation. And here's a picture of fragmentation right here. So you've got this quality habitat here, but it's kind of like its own little island. And in between, you've got a busy street and you've got houses and noisy people. So what is dangerous about this is that these guys can get genetically isolated and then you could have a bottleneck effect happen or a founder effect type of thing. And that can wipe out an entire community, even though they have all these patches of quality habitat. Um, I have another hilarious picture of fragmentation like, really? Really? You think this is a good idea, right? Um, so this is like, well, we're going to completely cut all of this stuff down and put something there that's not supposed to be there. But we'll leave this little patch here and this little patch here, and that should be fine, right? That is frightening. And fragmentation is not a good thing. Um, another thing that's happening, and a lot of times this is due to just people not knowing any better, is um, introduced species. Introduced species are going to be species that come from another location. Um, and this can happen in a bunch of different ways. People just don't know any better, right? And they get a pet and they release it out into the wild. That's a huge one. Um, stowaways, so they might be on a, on a ship coming from another country. Um, and then we've also done things on purpose, like we've controlled other populations with things we shouldn't have. We brought things in for sports so people can fish for them and for beautification. So um, I'm actually going to make a little video about introduced species after this so you can see some examples, but I'll show you some pictures of some other ones. Um, so zebra mussels, that's going to be something a little close to home, right? You probably heard about these. Zebra mussels were introduced in the ballast water of a ship. And what happens is um, ships, when they don't have cargo on them, they'll fill the bottom with water to stabilize them a little better. So they're taking water from one location and then going all the way somewhere else and then dumping that water out when they get new cargo. And that's how the zebra mussels made their way into the Great Lakes. Huge, huge problem because they are just multiplying like crazy and they are voracious filter feeders, which means they filter out all the nutrients and then there's nothing left for all the other fish that are trying to live. So here in Colorado, if you've ever taken a boat into any of the reservoirs or the lakes around here, they do a huge inspection of your boat to make sure that you don't have any zebra mussels on them because they're so scared of them getting into our waters here. Um, another example is a kudzu vine. This is a huge, huge problem, um, especially uh, down in the south. So this was brought over from Asia, and this vine literally covers everything. I mean, you can see in this picture. If you've ever driven through, like, Georgia, you've seen it, and it is causing tons of problems because it's killing all the wildlife that's there. Um, Another example, this is a picture of a northern pike. Now, this is one that was brought here on purpose. They stocked these guys in the um, waters here and were like, oh, yeah, these will be fun for people to fish. And then they noticed that all the other fish populations were going down really fast, and that's because these are voracious predators, and they like to eat the young of the fish that were there. So now they're like, fish them all you want, get them out of here. So it's just crazy. And I'm sure you've heard about in Florida People have let pythons go down there because they didn't know what to do with them and they got too big. And Florida doesn't have winter, so these things are getting huge. And in my little video I'll make for you later, I'll show you pictures that I have from my friends of snakes that are like 25 feet long on the side of the road just cruising along. Crazy. So exotic species are really, really um, scary things. And a lot of times people just don't know any better. 
Um, these next two kind of go together. Over-exploitation, so that's going to be harvesting something faster than it can um, replace itself, and that's usually going to involve K-selected organisms. And then, of course, with that happening, you're going to disrupt the food chain, right? So if we overhunt prey, predators are going to starve. Or if we overhunt predators, then the prey are going to explode. So um, I think I've got a picture of this here. Let's see if I do. Oh, I don't, but I'll put it in my little video I make about... Um, exotic species. So we're definitely doing a good job of screwing up the earth, aren't we? So what we're going to talk about in the next video is going to be how we are going to fix what we've done. So we will end on a higher note, I promise.